So now let's talk about what happens when oxygen is available. In my previous video, we talked about um, cell energy and we talked about what happens when oxygen was not present. So now we're going to talk about what happens when oxygen is present. We'll review glycolysis and talk about the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid, and electron transport. Brought to you by Curious Marine Land. All right. Now, we went this pathway in the previous video. Now we're going to go this pathway. And why is that important? And what's the significance of being able to do that? So we, this was in the previous video. We went down this way. But now we're going to say, what happens when oxygen is available? If I were to draw a circle around here, that would represent the mitochondria. All right. And some of the parts of this video are going to be very technical, and um, so like some of my honor students will, will need to know that. Some of my regular students will it'll help you better understand, but don't worry if you miss some details. All right, quick reminder, the cell membrane is something that keeps things in and out of a cell. Well, the mitochondria, because we're eukaryotic, has an inner and outer membrane. It actually has its own DNA. That's a topic for a whole other video later on. But let's remind ourselves what's going on here. We've got the inner and outer part. And what's going to happen is as the, let's imagine this is the cytoplasm. So pyruvic acid has just been broken down into, into it's been broken down, right? That means glucose was broken down into pyruvic acid. Now oxygen is available. It's going to go diffuse through these membranes and something's going to happen. It's going to be further broken down in several steps that are going to generate chemical energy for us, ATP. Okay, this is kind of the big picture. I'm going to move myself out of the way here. So glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport. Glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport. Now, you might notice these. These are hydrogen carrier molecules. Carbohydrates, um, actually some lipids and proteins all go through the Krebs cycle as they get in. So I like this one, this picture better because it shows pyruvic acid being broken down. And look, after glycolysis, you get a little ATP. But if you have oxygen, and we should write like a little O2 here and say that triggers this. And actually, I'm not going to write it here. This is actually where it comes in. It's the last step. This is the ultimate reason why you need oxygen. Because if you don't have oxygen, this stops, which means this stops, which means this stops. Ultimately, you run out of this and you die. Okay. So if we just stop with glycolysis, if we just stop with glycolysis, sorry, we would only get two ATP. Only get two ATP. So down at the bottom it says one glucose produces two pyruvic acid, two ATP, and NADH. Um, we talked about earlier how if we recycle the NADH during um, fermentation, that allows for glycolysis to happen still. And that's what's important about that. Now, this is very this is the actual structure of pyruvic acid. If oxygen over on this side is available, this is going to diffuse through a transport protein and go through a series of steps. Here's your first NAD. Notice NAD plus H. If you pay close attention, every single time you see one of these, you should notice a carbon dioxide somewhere along there. Remember, this is a this is a three carbon chain, but glucose is a six carbon chain. So there's actually two pyruvates that go through here. All right. So let's watch. Um, so here's the Krebs cycle. We're at this part of the mitochondria. And what's happening is there's your three carbon chain, and it starts going through a, a series. So you can actually account for everything. So there's one carbon. Now it's two carbon chain. It gets combined with this and goes through a series of changes and changes and changes. And there's another one of the original carbon dioxides. If wherever one of those shows up, you should see an NADH. And then down here, there's another carbon. NADH and actually that actually generates some ATP and then there's one more er, hydrogen that gets picked up by the other carrier called FAD. We'll talk about the difference between those in a second. All right, now let's move on. If you pause for a second, just to read this says, look, glycolysis is going to further be, er, uh, break down uh, is after glycolysis. I'm sorry, pyruvate gets broken down, broken down, broken down, and all these steps which we just saw before. But let's Let's kind of see what's going on here. All right, so carbon dioxide is released during the Krebs cycle. It's going to go to the atmosphere. It's if you're talking about us, a multicellular or, or all multicellular organisms, or anything that does cell respiration, it's got to leave their body. For us, it gets in our bloodstream, goes to our heart, then to our lungs, and 
we exhale it. This stays in the mitochondria and it goes to the next stage, the electron transport. This is where you get a lot of your ATP. Okay, so if we do a little counting just after the Krebs cycle, you'll see three carbon dioxide, one ATP, one FAD, and four of these. Wait, why is that only six? Because that's only half of the original glucose. The next part comes in, and now multiply this by two, and you'll have six, two, two, eight. So the Krebs cycle happens twice for every one glucose molecule. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so here we are. We talked about glycolysis. Glucose gets broken down. Pyruvic acid goes in and gets broken down. And next, the NADs and FADs go to electron transport. Look, this is just a hydrogen carrier molecule. The carbon dioxide is leaking out here, but the hydrogens, remember, glucose, glucose is CH and O. It's carbon, it's oxygen, it's hydrogen. As you break this down into pyruvic acid, that's what this is, so, all right, you're going to keep breaking it down, breaking it down, the carbon dioxide are coming, hydrogens get picked up, and then ultimately you're going to recycle it, all right? So let's, uh, let me throw me back in here. So now we're, we're talking about the inner and outer. Now, I'm not going to really have my students really know in great detail about the inner and outer, but the inner membrane is where we're generating the most ATP. You notice you get ATP for glycolysis. You get it for a little bit of Krebs and most of it from electron transport. Now this is this is kind of the complicated part here. NADH sloughs off its hydrogen. Notice see where the hydrogens are being picked up? They're being picked up. Now the difference between NADH and FADH on how many ATP they produce is where they start. FAD starts later in this little, little membrane protein. They're called cytochromes. Now, as electron, this create this creates an electron field. Remember, a hydrogen is an electron. All right. So as those electrons are sloughed off, the hydrogen ions kind of accumulate up here, and when what you have is they're going to pull down here and they're going to diffuse through. This is called chemiosmosis. They're going to diffuse through, and this is going to power the production of ATP. There's ADP, it picks up a, a phosphate to become ATP. Now the last step is oxygen picks up the hydrogen and it leaves as water. This is the ultimate reason why we need oxygen. And we get a lot of ATP. So here's just the parts. I'm kind of in the way here. Here's the parts. You got the inner membrane space, the crista, and then the matrix. So it's a double membrane. So remember, out here would be outside of the cytoplasm. This is a there's a membrane here, or where the where Krebs is going on, and then the product of Krebs goes, well, carbon dioxide leaves, but then the NADH, the hydrogen carrier molecules, go across this inner membrane, and then they pull back. All right, watch this animation. Well, first let me mention the two. For every one NAD, you get three ATP. For every one FAD, you get two. This is why we say the product, the number of ATP varies from anywhere from 34 to 38. Uh, we count the original two from glycolysis, but then what happens is we um, it depends on NAD or FADs that are produced. All right. So here's here's what's happening. So the hydrogens pull and then they come back down and they pass through this. This is actually an enzyme called ATP synthase. All right. Now here's just another. This is what I like about this is the flash. This is showing you you all those those NADHs sloughing off their hydrogens, the hydrogens powering the production of ATP. Here's here it is. I'll just let it run one more time. Here's ADP there, and then we talk about oxygen picking up that hydrogen. So I'll do this part quickly. So remember the whole idea is energy is passing through, and you're transporting hydrogens. Okay. Um, this is just a little more details about it. This is that. Uh, enzyme called ATP synthase. It's an enzyme that's embedded in the membrane, the inner membrane in, um, of the mitochondria. Okay, and electron transport, the last thing is oxygen is going to pick up those hydrogens and it leaves as water. This is one of the things that my students always need to know. So to recap, this is kind of busy, but you're seeing the big picture. If oxygen is available, the complete breakdown of glucose generates a whole bunch of ATP. 
It doesn't do it directly. It it produces some directly, but some is this process of storing the, the hydrogens as you get rid of the carbon dioxides. Remember, CH and O always account for those three atoms, where they are, and what's happening to them. And then so here's oxygen coming in, water, oxygen, oxygen in, water out. Okay, um, this is just a quick little, another visual that shows the total of 36. Um, it's between 36 and 38 ATP, uh, depending on um, a couple of these. Sometimes we have, uh, you know, that's basically what all the statistics show. All right, so to recap, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. One glucose gets broken down, you get two ATP, and it gets ATP and NADH. What happens to NADH? You either have no oxygen and you recycle it through through fermentation. If you have oxygen, you go into, well, there's our numbers, you go into the mitochondria and you do, you continue to break down pyruvic acid. And you get more ATP, you get six carbon dioxide, you get some hydrogen carrier molecules. Now what happens next? Carbon dioxide, it's going to leave. The carbon dioxide is going to leave. The ATP is going to go to where you need ATP to do work within that cell. These two have got to be broken down or recycled. Hydrogen gets picked up by oxygen. But the process of doing that is going to get you more ATP. And that's where electron transport happens. So the NAD and the FADs get rid of their ATP. You get more. Uh, they get rid of their hydrogens. My, sorry. And the last thing is oxygen picks it up. And then water leaves. And that just becomes like it a waste product as well. All right, this is just one more summary. All right, brought to you by Curious Brandman. All right, thanks for watching.